here we're back at Shifted Ed. Um, this is a Learn Quebec podcast that we've been doing for a couple of years now. Um, and we kind of tap in a little bit to our our community, our Anglo community. And today um, I have Nick Maturo from Elan, which is English Language Artists Network. Uh, sorry, English Language Arts Network. Um, and he's here to kind of share a little bit about what they do and what they can offer our, our Anglo educational community um, and maybe get a little bit of background um, into how Elan works. So, so welcome, Nick. Thanks for joining me today. Thank you for having me, Chris. Pleased to be here. Yeah. So, Nick, you're you're new to this post, right? Or, or relatively new within the last, you know, couple handfuls of months uh, that you've been the executive director? Yeah, that's right. Well, I'm currently serving as the interim executive director. So I've been in that role since uh, since May of last year. But uh, I've actually been with the organization for a while now. So I joined in 2019, I think, as a uh, as a research coordinator. I've done some project management along the way. And yeah, currently serving as uh, as interim ED. Awesome. Well, congratulations on that. Um, Thank you. We really like uh, at Learn uh, collaborating with Elan, so it just felt like a natural fit to hop on a podcast and talk with you. Um, could you kind of maybe just give us an overview of like what's the history behind Elan, and also like what's its objectives or its intent within the Anglo community? Sure. Um, I mean, well, sort of broadly speaking, uh, we like to think of our, our mission as being connecting, supporting, and creating opportunities for English-speaking artists across Quebec. Uh, the ways that we uh, that we do that are various. We have sort of a, a number of different uh, initiatives and projects that we cover. Um, but I guess sort of going back and taking a historical view of, of you know, how we started and, and where we've come from, the real genesis of Elan was uh, the Quebec Arts Summit. Uh, which took place in in 2004 uh, in mm -hmm. Montreal, and that was really, I think, the first opportunity for uh, for artists, for government officials, and other sort of stakeholders within Quebec's English language arts community to uh, to come together uh, and to sort of discuss the the community as a whole. Um, and it was sort of happening in a moment of, I think, um, you know, as our, our our founding ED Guy Rogers put it, a sort of sense of renewed optimism. I think after the uh, after the second referendum and the sort of cultural mm -hmm. scene in Quebec and certainly mm -hmm. in Montreal in particular, really starting to heat up. Um, so this was really the first real meeting of its kind uh, to discuss supporting uh, artists and cultural workers uh, within what is, uh, you know, Quebec's official language minority community. Um, so El Elan sort of rose from that process. And, and really, I think we got the sense from that, that meeting that there was the necessary to have a kind of center of gravity um, to help create a sense of community. I think there was, um, you know, the sense that there were a lot of sort of disparate artists who had, you know, some sort of informal connections between each other, um, some of whom saw themselves as, as you know, English speaking artists, but perhaps not even all of them, you know, really conceived of themselves that way. So it was really important to have, you know, an organization like Elan there to help uh, create that sense of community help uh, provide opportunities for for artists and cultural workers to uh, to connect and, and you know find new ways to collaborate um, so I think a lot of the, the early work was really around you know uh, networking opportunities mm -hmm. uh, opportunities to create a sense of community but um, you know since then while the you know after the community has sort of taken root I think it's it's mm -hmm. certainly fair to say um, we've tried to build on that and, and uh, I think understand the the challenges that English speaking artists face in Quebec, and make sure that we're offering them, you know, also uh, practical resources that can support them. Um, so often that that takes the uh, you know the appearance of capacity building resources like workshops or mm -hmm. one on one consultations with a you know a, an expert or a professional in a given field. Um, certainly, it's it's advocacy work as well, you know, with funders and and other other government stakeholders. Um, and, and really, you know, I think increasingly over the last five to seven years, trying to create uh, new professional opportunities for English speaking artists in Quebec, right. uh, right. frequently looking at other sectors as an opportunity to do that. Education being sort of the, I think, the clearest example of that. Right. Absolutely. And like, what, what kind of artists um, have memberships within Elan? Like, what kind of artists do you guys attract? I mean, yeah, what are what are some examples of the artists you have? That are yeah, well, 
I guess uh, you know it's worth mentioning that Elan is a is a multidisciplinary uh, art mm-hmm. service organization. So we really cater to artists from uh, you know the the full spectrum of artistic backgrounds. Um, certainly, we have a I think a strong representation of folks in the performing arts, but certainly the visual arts are are well represented as well. Um, and I think it's really important for us to ensure that we serve a, a sort of diversity of artistic disciplines. Um, you know, because there are, there are some of our sister organizations like the Quebec Drama Federation, Quebec Writers Federation, um, they're experts in those fields. They serve those communities incredibly well. Um, but other, uh, artistic disciplines don't actually have a, a sort of English language, um, service organization for them specifically. So it really behooves us to ensure that we're, um, we're covering a broad range in terms of people's, uh, uh, you know, uh, artistic backgrounds and the work that they do. Amazing. We also, you know, have a really wide range between emerging and established artists, which is really great. Um, the majority of our members are based in Montreal, but certainly um, an increasing uh, amount of our members are, are located in regions outside of Montreal as well. I think now over a quarter of our membership is in the regions. So mm-hmm. we're, we're really increasingly focused on making sure that we're offering resources and uh, and connection opportunities to them that recognize their own, um, you know, unique regional realities. And of course, you know, uh, absolutely worth mentioning that we're, uh, we have a very strong representation of, of teaching artists within our community as well, um, which has, has been really uh, wonderful. And we owe completely to the success of our, our art ed program. So, you know, it's admittedly a challenge uh, trying to ensure that we, we offer something for everyone that is, uh, you know, interesting and, and useful and compelling but i think it's a uh, it's an exciting challenge it's one that pushes us to make sure that we're you know always in touch with our community always in touch with our members understanding their needs and ensure that you know our, our resources and our services evolve um, to make sure that they're getting the, the support that they need that's amazing let's let's nail down a little bit on the on the the educational artists or the artists that that um can be of, of service within our schools um, here mm-hmm. in Quebec. Um, what what are some examples of of what those members bring into schools or um, projects that they get involved with via like a classroom or a teacher? Yeah, I mean, frankly speaking, there are so many good examples that it's really hard <laughs> to pick just one. I but bet, um, I bet, yeah. I mean, you know, certainly I, I think it's worth highlighting some of the important work that they do in the classroom with uh, with at-risk youth, mm-hmm. um, with special needs students, uh, with students who are experiencing mental health challenges. You know, increasingly we're, we're trying to ensure that our teaching artists ha- really have the training to ensure that they can they can deal with some of the mental health challenges that are, I think it's fair to say, you know, uh, increasingly prevalent since the pandemic. Um, sure. So I think those are some, you know, in a, in a general sp- sense, those are some examples of the really important and valuable and unique uh, work that teaching artists can do in the classroom to help support uh, educators and the education process. Um, I, I also think it's worth highlighting some of the really interesting projects, uh, really innovative projects that some of our teaching artists are doing around STEAM. So, mm-hmm. you know, of course, STEM is super popular, science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. But yeah. we're, we're throwing the arts in there as well because it, uh, it has a really important role to play. Absolutely. Um, sure. And I think it provides a really unique opportunity for, for students who maybe were having difficulties connecting with, with STEM topics to, to have a new way of engaging with those topics and have a way of sort of exploring their creativity at the same time. Um, but, you know, every, every, you know, teaching artist is unique. Every project is unique. Um, you know, thanks to the, the, the classroom setting that they're in. Um, you know, I'd really encourage folks to take a look on our artists inspire, uh, website at the, uh, the story section. You can see some really wonderful examples there that, uh, will hopefully inspire you and give you some ideas about the, the type of work that our artists can do in, uh, maybe in your classroom. Amazing. And what would be the process for a teacher to, I mean, obviously that page, which I'll list in the um, description box so that people have access to it. Um, but like, what what's the process for a teacher that would be interested in um, ha- inviting an artist to come and participate? Um, are projects kind of 
hash together or does the artist come in with an idea or like what's all that process like um to kind of get that ball rolling yeah so certainly you know if you look at on the artist inspire website at uh, at our repertoire of artists um there are there are workshop offerings up there that people can get a look at to to maybe give them some ideas um but certainly you know for any interested educator who wants to explore this opportunity um the first step would be to decide whether they want to uh opt for our sort of regular workshop offering, or if they want to try out uh, one of our new one day events, this is a sort of pilot project that we've just mm -hmm. recently got off the ground. So the difference being that the, the workshop is a bit of a longer term, um, opportunity, um, you know, in the classroom, which provides, I think, uh, an opportunity to go a little bit deeper in terms of working mm -hmm. with students. Um, mm -hmm. whereas the one day event is, uh, is a sort of obviously more limited event, but it gives a sense of uh, you know, the work that an artist does and gives mm -hmm. a really good opportunity for students to ask some questions about uh, about their practice and their career as an artist. Um, so can you know, you, once an could educator... You, could you offer yeah, an ahead. example of, of that? Like, it, I, I, I wasn't aware of the, the, the one hour kind of, like, what, 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 would, what are some of those offerings that, that Elaine has? It's, it's, it's really brand new. So there yeah. are, uh, you know, a number of different, um, uh, teaching artists within our repertoire have, uh, have pitched some of these. So you can find them mm -hmm. on the artist inspire website. Um, but frequently those look like, uh, you know, uh, an artist coming to do a performance, uh, mm -hmm. whether for a class or for a number of classes, followed by a bit of an artist talk Q and a session. Um, so a, a little bit less sort of tied to the curriculum compared to the, um, the, the workshops that we're, we're usually known for, but I think right. it's still a great opportunity to get an artist um, into a school setting who is familiar, uh, you know, in working in a classroom environment and engaging with students um, to sort of, you know, provide a really interesting and exciting uh, exposure to the arts and also sort of talk through their, their process and, and how they work and, and hopefully right. give some, some students some interesting ideas about what a, what an artist is and does. Yeah, sounds like a great kind of jumping off point for teachers to kind of get the kids inspired and excited about whatever might evolve from that initial contact. That's a great idea. Um, Absolutely. Yeah, we look at these as two really complementary offerings that hopefully, you know, for, perhaps for folks who are maybe a little bit reticent to get involved or, or to, you know, uh, see the value of the arts in the classroom, but I'm mm -hmm. just for one reason or another, haven't jumped in with both feet yet. This is, a, I think, a really good opportunity to uh, to see the impact that a qualified and, and talented teaching artist can have in a school. Absolutely. Do you have any um, success stories that you could share with us, like of things that you've seen or participated in where you you saw that spark in the student's eyes that, like, do you have, could you share any of your personal examples? Because you, you, were a part of Elaine before you become into you got into this position. Um, like, were you participating as well in some of these workshops? Um, Unfortunately, for... not. No. But so prior to my current role, I was working on another project. But in in that um, setting, I did have a number of, of really great opportunities to work with the Artists Inspire team mm -hmm. um, with uh, with the project manager Guillaume Jabour, who uh, does uh, incredible work. Um, supporting both educators and, and teaching artists and making sure that uh, that they're they're able to do great work. Um, so my exposure, you know, while in the direct sense has been limited, it's been mm -hmm. really great to be able to talk to to Guillaume, to mm -hmm. hear from him directly about some of the wonderful projects that have taken place and some of the feedback that he's gotten. And also some really great opportunities to get to know some of the teaching artists. Um, right. I've been able to organize some some workshops where we've invited them to uh, to sort of come and present on their work, provide a bit of uh, sort of professional development uh, kind of information for for their peers, uh, and I can really see firsthand the skill and the passion in what they mm -hmm. do. So yeah. so that's been incredibly inspiring, and you know I, I really do get the sense from them that they love what they do. They've had so many great opportunities to connect with with students, and for them to see firsthand the uh, the impact of what they do. Amazing. Yeah. I remember um, talking with Louise Campbell, who is one of your members, mm -hmm. just an extraordinary artist. Um, and she was connecting music with the outdoors. Um, 
and she walked me through some of what she does with the students. Um, and just going outside and listening to the sounds that are out there already <laughs> um, and how the kids would react to this, you know, kind of hesitant what's going on here at first, but then really diving into it um, and, and appreciating um, the new perspective that they were getting from, you know, a talented artist that is local. Um, so, I mean, just excellent stories that I've heard um, via some of your members. Yeah, I, I have a music and sound background myself, so I'm perhaps particularly biased in really appreciating the work <laughs> that uh, that Louise does in particular. But, uh, you know, certainly I think that's a great example of, you know, it's an opportunity many times for for students to be presented with with something that is really brand new for them and, and mm -hmm. maybe is is a bit, you know, sort of, um, there's a hesit hesitancy at first to see how, like, how do I engage with this? But <laughs> it can be a really, I think, inspiring process and can, you know, uh, presents opportunities for, for growth and, and learning that I think are, you know, uh, cannot be taken for granted. Yeah. I mean, I was going to ask you about the benefits, but I think we're kind of, they're tumbling out as we speak here. Um, but it brings that that reality and also a, a different lens that the students and the teachers can see things through that they might not have that opportunity without having Elan there available to come in and, and kind of bring a perspective in that might not necessarily be evident to teachers and students. Absolutely. And I think it's a fresh opportunity for, for students who perhaps are you know, having difficulty expressing themselves or coming out of their shell to really find a new way to to express themselves and to engage with, uh, you know, the, the materials in the classroom. Um, you know, it's uh, I think it's a really important um, chance to take a sort of fresh approach in the classroom. Absolutely. And what might be some some other benefits that you've seen over your time with the land that that you'd like to share with the community? Like, People hear about, you know, okay, it's a, it's a, it's a network, it's a, a community for artists, but do the benefits, I mean, other than the ones we just spoke about, are there other benefits that continuously surprise you that, that are exposed as, as time rolls on in this, um, organization? Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, well, first of all, in terms of benefits, I should also speak to benefits from the, from the teaching artist perspective. Um, you know, it's a it's a, a really new and interesting way for them to perhaps sort of supplement their more um, mm -hmm. conventional, if we can put it that way, kind of artistic work. Um, mm -hmm. New opportunities to, you know, we look at it as as, as sort of a, a really great opportunity to both earn some additional income, but also, um, you know, do something that is really rewarding as well. Mm -hmm. um, and mm -hmm. sort of in turn, from the work that they do through Artists Inspire. Um, that can also lead to other really important um, sort of opportunities through things like the Gover Government of Quebec's Culture in the Schools program, as well as all kinds of other sort of um, you know, tangential opportunities, which we try as much as possible to help steer them towards and provide some, uh, some support whenever they, they need a bit of assistance in accessing those. But I mean, sort of speaking more broadly, it's it's sometimes a challenge to uh, to sort of succinctly describe what Elan does because we do so many things, you know, uh, beyond our sort of core services, projects like Artists Inspire and some mm -hmm. of the other projects that we do really, uh, I think, show the breadth of, of what the arts can do and the many sort of um, perhaps sometimes surprising, but I think it, you know, it makes sense intuitively, the many ways that the that arts and culture touch on, uh, you know, Quebec society, on English-speaking mm -hmm. communities within Quebec. I think that has been perhaps not not surprising uh, in that sense, but it has been a real eye-opener since I joined Elan, I would say, in terms of coming from my own sort of artistic background in a, a really more sort of narrow, conventional sense as a, as a sort of composer and performer. And getting to see concretely uh, all of the ways that uh, that the arts can can touch people. Um, so whether it's Absolutely. Artists Inspire, um, whether it's our, our We're All In This Together project, um, which we did with Seniors Action Quebec, which helped mm -hmm. to sort of break isolation for English-speaking um, seniors in Quebec during the pandemic. 
Um, you know, there are really are countless examples that uh, uh, we shouldn't just think of the arts as a sort of little corner unto itself. It's something that uh, that I think we all love and can benefit from and that can can make the world a better place. Absolutely. Well, it kind of brings us back to the STEM steam. Um, mm. You know, these subjects that we teach in school, I mean, they're everywhere, right? And it's bringing them together and seeing the beauty, how they interact with one another, rather than segregating them into isolated, you know, pools. Um, I find that the art, we always say steam, you know, when we're doing mm -hmm. work at Learn, um, just because we know that art piece is so valuable. Um, another interesting thing you said too, is the cyclical nature of it, where the artists are also getting tons of stuff back at the same mm -hmm. time as the students are getting, the teachers are getting, like it's this give and take, which I, you said really elegantly that I, I really like that idea that it's a, it's a mutual, it's mutually beneficial for them. Um, where they're both taking stuff out and kind of seeing things differently <laughs> than they might and getting out of their their box um, a little bit, which is fantastic. Absolutely. Yeah, and I think it, you know, it, uh, it, it speaks to this sort of overall point that we think of the arts as a, as a sort of added value that, you know, uh, with the arts, uh, it's things are greater than the sum of their parts. Absolutely. So, Nick, thanks again just for, for hopping on here and, and chatting a bit. Um, of course. I encourage all of my educator friends and teachers out there to look in. I'm going to put the links so that you can go and click on. I'm sure that most of you have heard of Eli and the beautiful things that they can offer. Um, take advantage. Uh, there's so many great artists. I mean, we're the home of Leonard Cohen for crying out loud. So <laughs> um, my last question is what's, what's coming down the pipe in 2024 for Elan? What's What's on the docket for you guys this year? It's a uh, it's a typically busy year for Elan, although it's uh, it's a bit of a special year as well because 2024 is actually our, our 20th anniversary year. Oh, nice! Congrats. So we're wor thank you. We're working on some some sort of exciting um, events and uh, social media content that can go along with that and uh, appropriately uh, celebrate the milestone. Um, but certainly, you know, in the meantime, business as usual in terms of the uh, in terms of the the workshop and capacity building offerings that we uh, we always like to consistently offer. So we have some great stuff coming up around uh, grant writing resources, around um, filing your taxes for artists. Something that I think is a source of apprehension for everyone, but hopefully <laughs> we can dispel some of that. Um, and of course, each of our you know our, our you know, several projects has its own um, calendar of, of things coming up. Um, that includes our community digital arts hub studio, which is a relatively recent Elan project. It's a, it's a digital studio space based in downtown Montreal, uh, provides uh, studio space and equipment that is available to rent at affordable rates, as well as uh, training opportunities to learn uh, and sort of bolster your digital skills. So say, for example, you love listening to podcasts like this one, you want to throw your hat in the ring and uh, maybe start your own, but you're not sure where to start. Uh, the Community Digital Arts Hub is a really great resource to be able to uh, learn how it's done, um, have access to uh, you know, sort of professional grade facilities at an affordable rate and uh, find a new way to, uh, to express yourself. So, um, you know, hard to succinctly summarize it all, but I'd say, you know, Check out the uh, community calendar on our website. It's full of not just uh, Elan's own events, but also mm -hmm. events from our community members. And certainly, you know, uh, keeping track of our newsletter or our Facebook uh, and Instagram pages, uh, you'll make sure you get all the latest news and won't miss anything. Perfect. And I will list all of those at the uh, in the descriptor so that you don't Fantastic. have to search very far, guys. Um, <laughs> again, thanks so much, Nick. This has been a real treat. Um, I, I'm really excited that this community exists and that we get to collaborate with you guys. Um, Likewise. And let's just keep this ball rolling um, 24, 25, 26 as the years roll on. So thanks again for for joining me and sharing um, what Elan is, is all about. Really fascinating. Thank you. My pleasure. Thank you so much, Chris.